The Shooting Range. In this episode, all inclusive and no surprises please, the story of the KI-94-2. Discovering the Maginot Line. Hotline, the developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with some advice on how to use your MiG-17 as a strike aircraft. The MiG-17 is in the fighter section of the Soviet tech tree. That's true, but it doesn't stop it from bombing the hell out of its enemies' ground tech. How's that? Let's figure it out. First, check those payload options. Now, what are we here? Let's see. Two OFAB-250 bombs, 16 S-5K and 16 S-5M rockets, and two S-21 rockets. Why the hell is a MiG-17 a fighter then? Ah, right. It only has two suspension points. Anyway, you've got a lot of options to choose from. Let's start with the bombs. These are standard 250 kilogram variants. Some might call it golden standard of striking aviation. You need to be precise with them. If you manage to drop those presents within a five meter range of the enemy, you'll really cause him to shut up. Remember that in RB, you've only got one drop. But that won't be a problem for a skilled striker pilot. Hit them air brakes, aim, drop and get back to where you descended from. On the other hand, this firepower isn't very monumental, is it? Let's look at the missiles then. First, we have unguided S5K rockets. Now, that's what we're talking about. Eight double launches. That's something nobody can ignore. Moreover, the S5K has a shaped charge warhead, so it can pierce 150 millimeters of armor. It can damage almost anything, heavy tanks aside. On the other hand, these rockets don't have a lot of explosive materials inside, so the only way to succeed here is to make a lot of direct hits. Anyway, train your aim and flying skills more often, and at some point you'll start getting all those lion's points and your teammates' appreciation at the same time. As for the S5M rockets, they are almost useless against ground tech. Those will come in handy should you choose to hunt some bombers. Just don't forget to set the explosion distance. That will make your life a lot easier. And now, the S-21. Probably the best rockets on rank 5. They're powerful, fast, and can be launched one at a time with great precision. Basically, you've got two frags under your wings, waiting to be obtained. You just need to avoid enemy fire. Look at how these beauties disassemble those tanks. That's a work of art for sure. Also, they almost don't influence your performance, as you only lose 11 kph of maximum speed and get an additional second of turn time. Skilled pilots will confirm that even changes so mild can cost you a victory in a dogfight. But the S-21s are so effective that they're definitely worth the risk. How should you use your underwing armament? Let's see. Good launch distance would be from 400 to 800 meters. Come closer and you'll become an easy target for the anti-aircraft guns and from further distances it's a lot harder to hit the target. Try bombing your targets from the highest angle, ideally from a completely vertical dive. It's not the only option, just the most effective. And it's easier to aim, and the chance of destroying the target becomes much higher. Also, don't torture yourself aiming at high speed. You've got the air brakes just for this occasion. Though, don't forget to disable them when you're done. Summing up, the MiG-17 is perfect for strike activities as well as the MiG-15 bis that has the same payload options. If, for some reason, you still haven't tested them in combined battles, we've just told you why you should stall no more. And now let's go to Japan where the engineers were desperately trying to invent an aircraft without actually inventing anything new.
When the Americans started bombing Japan, the Imperial Japanese Army Air Service Command suddenly realized that they needed a high-altitude interceptor right about yesterday. The engineers of the Tachikawa Aircraft Construction Bureau also realized the gravity of the situation and presented a very unconventional plane. Even too unconventional. It was the KI-94, a two-engine aircraft with both pusher and tractor propellers and with a twin boom tail, as on the American P-38 Lightning. The engineers had already realized that by the end of 1943, the concept of a traditional one-engine monoplane was almost outdated. But it was impossible to make the conservative Japanese military command realize this fact. Despite all the arguments of Hasegawa Tatsuo and his engineers, they demanded something a bit more familiar. Okay, you want something old? <laughs> you get something old. The next iteration of this high-altitude interceptor was called almost the same, the KI-94-2. And as the military had ordered, there was nothing special about it. Seriously, no innovations at all, except for a new propeller with six blades. But the beauty of the KI-94-2 was in combining a lot of good ideas that were previously used separately in other planes. Let's take a closer look. A newest 18-cylinder radial engine with forced air cooling of hot piston heads, a nice solution taken straight from the German Focke-Wulf 190 and the Japanese Raiden. The wing was adopted from the Mustang to ensure good speed performance. And they got the ideas for the center wing mechanization from their colleagues at Nakajima Corporation. Now they had to solve the turbocharger problem. A lot of aircraft designers got used to installing those right behind the engine. But because of that, the exhaust gas didn't have time to cool down before reaching the turbocharger. As a result, the latter literally melted. It turned out that the decision had already existed in the pre-war American P-43 and in the later P-47 Thunderbolt. Those machines had the turbocharger placed behind the cockpit. Did it work? <laughs> Hell yes! So, they took the Thunderbolts variant and implemented only a couple of small construction modifications. Now, this aircraft the military liked very much. Just because it looked familiar. The problem was, it was too late. The American bombers had already destroyed most of the Japanese industrial objects. The creation of the KI-94-2 was taking longer than expected. By the 1st of August 1945, it became clear that the new propeller wasn't going to be ready in time. So they used a simple four-blade one from the KI-84. And all of that was in vain. Because in just two weeks, they were already showing it to the surprised American specialists who packed this new aircraft in a big container, patted the destroyed Hasegawa's shoulder, and took the unusual prototype to America for good. And now, it's time to take a look at the other map introduced in the recent update. This big and very diverse map takes us to pre-war France. We get to a town built next to a castle. The war hasn't yet come to this place, but it's clear that the French are already waiting for it. This map has a lot of different environments from fields and hills and to a whole town filled with tiny streets. Basically, the Maginot Line consists of open spaces, so your main problem will be controlling your surroundings. There are too many positions from which a careless player can be shot from. Since the Maginot Line is so tremendous, it's not very wise to ride slow and heavy tech here. In your case, we recommend sticking to the town and the sea point. And if you're driving something fast and light, you can comfortably focus on getting to B and fighting for A. Let's take a closer look. The A point here is the most open one. 
It has only a couple of buildings and two bunkers around it. Also, you can't get anywhere near it without being seen. Your only chance is with using natural cover, like this mound on the way to Bravo. If you decide to capture this point, use fast machines and smokes, and after that, take cover behind this hill. From there, you can clearly see both A and B points. Another option after the capture is secure is to go closer to the center of the map. The B point is a bit more protected. It is surrounded by old buildings that allow you to capture the point and then quietly flank your enemies and shoot them almost point blank. Just don't forget that behind those buildings, you'll be vulnerable against those who control the bunkers and villages around this point. Also, remember that you can hide somewhere on the point, but you can't hide anywhere on the way to it. There are too many places to be shot from, and you can't control them all. So, before approaching this point, take a friend with you. Better two. No, three. Moving away from Bravo, we're getting to the town and the castle. The tankers can't get through the gates, but this structure is very important from a tactical perspective. From its walls, you can clearly see the B point. It doesn't matter who's attacking, you or your opponents. Anyone who gets to these walls quicker will be able to spot and destroy the other. From the other side of the castle, you can see almost all exits from the town. Be very careful coming this way. There's a very high chance that somebody's already waiting for you there. As for the Charlie Point, this one is hidden among the streets of the town. You can access it via seven different entry points, and of course, you can't control them all. We recommend keeping in mind that there's an entrance from the river side. If you manage to sneak there by the shore, you'll be able to suddenly appear at your enemy's flank. From there on, it all depends on you. Strike fast and with precision, and if you do this right, you'll get the opportunity of easily capturing this point. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. comes from a player called Zackpack. Do a pages of history on Tiger 2 and talk about what they did late war? Hey there. We've actually done pages of history about this tank and its turrets. You might want to check the 57th episode for that one. As for its late war activities, we'll see what we can do. Then there's a question from Mr. Comp. Will we ever be able to manually destroy or damage parts of our planes and test flights? I want to practice emergency landings. I might. For now, we don't plan to introduce this option, but you can always take a friend to the custom battle modes. There, he can practice his aim, and you, those emergency landings. A player called Panzer General. When will the World War mode release? Hey there. Can't give you an exact ETA, but just last week we announced that we're spreading out our close beta test of this mode. Previously, it was only open to squadrons, but now we're ready to let single players come and try as well. Check the news section on our site for all the information. And the last message is a rare archived conversation found by Mr. Smitankovi Chastko, or in English, Mr. Creamy Cake. Mein Führer, our Panzer ones are not strong enough for our opponents. Then strap a 150mm how it's on it! What? Yes, you heard that right! That's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on The Shooting Range. <laughs>